All right, today we're hitting shoulders, which is a little unfortunate because some of the other channels just put out a dumbbell shoulder workout, but good news is this is completely different. We're going through different exercises, and on top of that, it's not gonna be a 10 minute video. If I try to talk that long on camera, I just hyperventilate and pass out. I'm also gonna test out doing a Q&A halfway through the video, because I always love when Casey Neistat did his Q&As and his mail time, although I'll probably never do mail time, because when you've had a few people DM you drawings they made of you, which wouldn't be that weird, but most of them are like half me, half man bear pig. It gets kind of weird. All right, we're starting off with a different take on Arnold presses because I get bored. I also found that myself and other people I've trained tend to respond better to having a different stimulus thrown at them every time they hit the gym than mastering a movement pattern and just upping the weight. So imagine for a second you're doing a very robotic and controlled Arnold press. You got that dumbbell in front of you, you open out to the side and then you press it out. Now we're doing that same exact thing, but instead of pressing when you're out to the side, you're gonna press when that dumbbell is in front of you. And the reason for that is because we're actually doing these on a slight incline. Because every time I train delts, I wanna start off with the exercise, it's gonna blow up my entire delt. Everything from that anterior head back to that posterior head, and these definitely do that. Because when you're leaning forward and doing a press with that supinated grip, you're gonna light up that anterior head, and as you open it around, you're gonna see that lateral head, and then finish it off in that posterior delt. No matter what you do after this, you can pretty much guarantee it's gonna be a rough workout. So I don't know about you, but I always have an incredible connection to any sort of exercise like the one we just did that makes my shoulder pull my elbow around my body. But instead of doing something like a W fly, because you don't even need weight for that. You can grab a couple of your kids' Legos and do those, they're so damn hard, which makes it a good thing to do when you have no equipment. But most people are so bound up and inflexible that it's not even an option. So what we can do is take those rotations from the Arnold presses, set up on a slight incline, and to ensure it's predominantly a rear delt movement, we can think about it as having two parts. First, the initial rotation, and then making those rear delts work even harder and enhancing the contraction by pulling slightly back. A little side note to get the most out of this movement, make sure you're actively holding those elbows out in front of you. If you try to keep those elbows tucked in, those shoulders will collapse as you come up, and it's not gonna feel good. So drive those elbows forward, that way you can open up that shoulder completely as you rotate around. All right, Q&A time. All right, question number one, ideal bulking diet ideas. As I've gotten older, my stance has changed on this. No longer will I go through five, six, seven months, however long the plan is of bulking, of looking awful, feeling awful, and not enjoying the process to only put on slightly more muscle. I think you're better off staying relatively lean, only slightly increasing your calories, optimizing your pre and post workout nutrition, cranking up the intensity of your workout, but not becoming a big fat mess. Although it is funny to see what the average person thinks is muscle because when I was at my fattest, you people come up and be like, you're jacked. There was not a vein on my body. So you can get away with it because people are dense. Is it okay to train if you're sore? I'm gonna say yes, because I do it all the time. Sometimes I'll actually train in the morning and then decide, okay, I'm gonna film that. So then I'll come over here, do the exact same workout, and just hit it basically twice in a day, which sucks on leg day. Do you ever incorporate heavy sets, one to five reps? Yeah, when I mess up and choose the wrong weight. When's the merch coming out? What I'll probably do is set up a Shopify store, throw three shirts in there and make it live for like five days just to see how many people buy, how much of a pain it is. If people like it, I'll do a new drop every month or whatever it is. I just didn't get it in this to sell shirts. If that was my thing, I'd be at the mall already pushing my shirts and some sort of magical salt from the Dead Sea. Honest thoughts on resistance bands. I mean, everything we use in the gym, all the machines we have access to, is just different ways to make you flex that muscle against resistance. It's a resistance band. It's not very much fun. So you're gonna have to walk up that, increase the tension, just get that muscle to fail. You're gonna get results. Is there any benefit to doing 100 crunches every day? Absolutely. Every time I've had to come back from an injury, I always go way overboard and hit that smaller muscle as much as humanly possible. I'll hit it every day if I have to, and it catches up quick. Diet, diet, diet. What to eat, when, amount for building muscle, and keeping fat off. It's very well put. That's an impossible question to answer in a broad way that applies to everybody, but even if there's somebody specifically here, you still wanna use trial and error and test and see what they respond to best. What I'll probably do is when the app comes out, I'll make some general diet videos, add my commentary and experience with each, and then whatever style you wanna choose and start off with and test your body with, I'll give you some guidelines to follow to ensure that you're gonna get results with no matter which one you use, but it just comes back to preference and what you respond to better. Also, someone asked if it's gonna be free. No, it's nine bucks. If you can't afford nine bucks for jokes, 
exact training sets, reps, all the videos I'm going to do, all the motivational, motivational, being an asshole on camera and telling you to get off your ass, then I don't know what to tell you. There'll be a free seven day trial. How's that? How much time should be spent on the gym floor? I mean, if it's a smaller body part like arms, that's 30 minutes. Legs, 45 hour, but you can get pretty much everything done if you're training solo, under an hour, unless you're just screwing off and flirting with everybody. And that concludes our Q&A. So I've talked extensively about using partial reps for that lateral head, but I don't know if I've ever gone into detail about how I use them to hit that anterior delt because I think most seasoned lifters, they just don't press. That's probably because early in their lifting career, they pressed heavy ass weight until one day they just hurt themselves and they're like, I guess I'm done with that. And they're scared to ever press again. But if you use partial reps, you can create a better connection to that anterior delt, but also pre-exhaust it so you don't have to use quite as heavy weight. And I always like to do my presses where I'm slightly lean back with my chest up because I'm okay with getting a little upper chest involved. I just don't think this is a very effective and safe way to press. I remember as a kid using this old school machine, which usually I'm a fan of. I usually think they're better, but this one was built wrong. It made you lean forward and press behind your head. After one set, I walked to the front desk and said, I need an out of order sign. You're like, what's wrong with the machine? It hurt me. So what you're gonna do is start out with 20 reps at the top of the movement. These are really short contractions where you're just flexing that anterior delt, then you're going right into fulls. Once you fail with full reps, you're not done yet. You do partial reps at the bottom of the movement, but I don't want you to bounce these up and down. I want you to actively contract that anterior delt, just get a little bit of movement, flex in the back down. You should be able to get another 20 there, and then you should be spent. And last but not least, because I've been doing these a lot recently, I'm gonna finish off with a lateral raise that is more of a pull and less of a raise. And I'm gonna go fairly light on these because I wanna hold a static contraction at the top for two seconds, but if you wanna throw some weight around, just make sure you have a great connection to it first and then grip it and rip it. If you like this video, you're going to want to watch these two next, but most importantly, make sure you subscribe and even more important, hit that notification bell. Otherwise, it does nothing. And get after you get growing. Talk to you soon.